Happy Wednesday, everybody. We're here at Disney Springs because we're on our way to Flavortown. We're going to Planet Hollywood Observatory, and the menu there has been presented by Guy Fieri, the mayor of Flavortown. Passing by and notice that Characters in Flight is up, and check out that new paint job. There it is. There's Flavortown. That's where we're going. Can't wait to get to Flavortown. They've got all sorts of employees out here greeting people and I guess telling people that it's open. Let's head into the store first and have a look around. Here's some of the Planet Hollywood merchandise. This stuff's pretty all right. I kind of like this jewelry they have. It's kind of fun. Some of it's not my favorite, but others I kind of like a lot. Like, I feel like I would wear that. At least on the other hand, I, I don't know. I don't think so. This one's not bad. I don't like that there's silver behind it though. I like this little bear. It should be noted that they do have some of the traditional merchandise still too. Let's see how much this shirt is. I couldn't find a price. This one is $28.95 though. Check out some of these. Do you want a Planet Hollywood dodgeball? It's the perfect koozie. These tumblers are pretty neat though. I don't think this clock's for sale, but it's so cool. Ooh, a shirt specifically made for me. All right, that's enough merchandise. Let's head in, get something to eat. Very cool. I like that they have a step and repeat over here too for us to take a photo. I think that they picked the wrong mannequin for under this Spider-Man 3 costume. Christopher Reeves' Superman outfit from Superman the movie. Oh, I'm so excited to go to Flavortown. Check out this ceiling right in front of the hostess stand. There's a giant screen on the inside that is playing music videos it looks like, but music videos from movies? We can kind of see the observatory section of it up top there. We can go up afterwards. There's memorabilia on the walls from the hook, Hunger Games, and Rocky, Forrest Gump over here, and Batman Returns. Or Batman Forever, sorry, that was Jim Carrey, the Riddler. For appetizer, I just ordered this, but this picture is of the high roller sampler. I got the cosmic sampler. The cosmic sampler doesn't come with shrimp. It comes with roasted garlic hummus instead. I feel like you can't go to Flavortown without getting a Big Bite burger. Um, they want me to get this one because that's like the signature, the bacon mac and cheese one, but I don't really want that. I don't know, it's kind of, what? What would you guys get? It's interesting that they have a veggie burger too, which is very cool. Aside from burgers, they have sandwiches, which uh, sounds actually really good. That pimento grilled cheese sounds amazing. I'm gonna get this one, even though it's gonna be messy, and I'm gonna get me a side of donkey sauce for my fries. So I'm kind of excited for dessert. I wanna try one of these crazy shakes, but also they have an ice cream and gelato challenge where they give you 12 flavors, and if you guess the flavor, you get a prize. That sounds enticing. If you guys were wondering what donkey sauce is, that's what it is. What is, what, what, super melty cheese? That's not a real thing. How can cheese be super melty? Upgrade to a burger lobster combo with a whole broiled lobster. Holy cow, at market price. I know people are like all about eating lots of crazy food, but like a whole lobster and a burger? I'm here with my friend Travis and he got the Stargazer, which is a uh, cocktail, like a signature cocktail here. They took away the menu, so I don't know what's in it. Holy cow, I did not think that the sampler was this big. Yeah, go ahead, spin it. Does it spin? Nope. Nope, doesn't spin, all right. Well, that's not as fun as I thought it was. So we got some sort of hummus, some sort of cheese dip, these are their signature chicken strips when they're like covered in Captain Crunch. Some sort of tostadas and some chicken wings and then chips and pita to dip in the hummus and the cheese dip. Just to give you guys some perspective as to how big this wheel is, like there's Travis behind it. <laughs> like, it's giant. Here's the hard part. I wanna get some cheese dip, I'm trying to like reach through it. It doesn't spin. <laughs> Trying to, oh, cheese dip. Okay, oh. now I gotta get it out here. All right, there we go. For ease of eating, we took them down off of the Ferris wheel. Try one of these tostadas. Mm. That's good. Try some of this Captain Crunch chicken. I'm excited for this. It's like super crispy. I'm gonna dip it in the, the it's got some like mustard that comes with it. Oh, it's good. It's like regular chicken, and then afterwards I was like, oh, with Captain Crunch. So we tried the chicken wings. They're very like chicken wingy, like standard chicken wings. This garlic hummus is pretty darn good, but also still like a standard hummus dish. And then their queso, like a nacho type cheese, uh, it was good. It's not like, I don't know, there's nothing special about it, but these guys, like that's ridiculously good. This is good and uh, interesting. But the rest of these three, kind of like a normal, bar food that you would get anywhere. So we haven't gotten our food yet, or our main course, but he did bring out the dessert menu. So I'm kind of interested in this gelato challenge. This brownie sundae martini looks amazing. And then they have single serving desserts on the back. I feel like these should come with a souvenir cup, but I don't think they do. 
So there's my burger. This is the bacon mac and cheese burger. And it looks pretty darn ridiculous. I actually don't see the burger anywhere in there. It's underneath everything. There it is. There's a little bit of the burger sticking out. But it comes with waffle fries. I got some extra donkey sauce for the side so I can dip in. Travis got the bird is the word. Which basically looks like fried chicken with coleslaw on it. It's pretty good. I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. My mustache makes things hard to eat, so I'm gonna cut this burger up with a knife and fork. I know that's not how you eat a burger, but that's what I'm gonna do. I just noticed that it's both waffle fries and normal fries, and it's interesting to note that they're like barbecue french fries. They taste like barbecue chips. They're good. Barbecue spice. I don't know what this design is supposed to be that was burnt into the top of the burger. Maybe some sort of observatory or Planet Hollywood? I just went to go cut it and this is what ended up happening. It just pretty much fell apart. You already know. So I realized that I never actually gave you guys a full review of what I thought of my burger in this video. It was a bad burger. It sort of tasted like they wanted to improve a flavor of a burger by just adding stuff on top of it just to kind of make it like a ridiculous burger with bacon and macaroni and cheese and just whatever they can put on top of it to try to make it like a ridiculous burger and that did not improve the flavor at all. Dealing with some opening weekend challenges, Travis ordered a gelato and ice cream challenge and they came back and said they don't have it. So, not quite ready yet. Also, they don't have any draft beers because they're not ready for that yet either. At least they still got my, my shake. You can get that. I'm really bad at remembering the names of what I just ordered, but I think this is called like a cosmic explosion. It looks uh, kind of ridiculous. I'm excited to compare this to Tusum. I can tell you right now, the actual cup that has the milkshake in it is smaller than Tusum. Travis ordered some sticky toffee pudding, which looks just like normal old sticky toffee pudding. Looks good though. It's a pretty decent milkshake. Pretty good. It was called the Chocolate Comet Supernova Shake. It looks pretty similar like to the picture. It does look a little bit bigger in the picture though. Travis just said he felt like he was eating a loaf of bread. I can tell you this, I am enjoying this shake a lot more than I enjoyed the Toothsome Shake. Cause it's just like a little bit thicker. The Toothsome seemed kind of like watery and icy. Or does this taste more like a milkshake? I just tried a bite of the sticky coffee pudding. It was good, but it does taste like you're eating bread. Like it's very grainy, not as cake-like. I pretty much finished that shake in like maybe five sips. Like it's done. Like all the liquid from the bottom is gone. Uh, I think you get a better deal from Toothsome, but this is a better shake. That's what my meal was today. I picked up the sampler that was our appetizer, but still a $75 lunch just for one person. Good time. So I can tell you guys my honest opinion, I'm not gonna eat here again. Like it wasn't good to me. It may have been good to other people, but I didn't like it at all. Let's go have a look around the rest of the restaurant at some of the memorabilia, which is pretty neat about Planet Hollywood. Here's a Beetlejuice display. There's a thing from Road Trip right here. Check this out. Oh, <laughs> so nice. Do you guys recognize this? Like what this miniature is? It kind of looks like it's made of chocolate. I don't think it is, but do you guys recognize it from anything? Leave me a comment down below. Kind of interesting fact, just on this other side is another bar that's upstairs. Are we on, oh no, there's still one more floor upstairs. So there's a bar downstairs, a bar on the second floor. And right, let's look at some more memorabilia on the second floor. Shawshank Redemption, Deadpool, uh, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, Ferris Bueller, Predator 2, Dracula, The Greatest with Muhammad Ali. Oh, Wayne's World guitar, that's cool. Beyonce's dress from Goldmember. Oh, dresses from The Princess Bride. An outfit from Rocky and another set of outfits from The Hunger Games. I don't want to get too close because there's a family eating right here. Roger Moore's tuxedo from Live and Let Die. For Your Eyes Only. It's a ski jacket worn by Lynn Holly Johnson. A signed George Clooney jacket from ER. Ooh, the axe from The Shining, that's awesome. Oh, Empire Records. Sexy, Rexy. Madonna's outfit from The League of Their Own. T-1000 arms. T-1000 arms, that's amazing. Uh, Barney's outfit from the Flintstones movie. We present to you these 15, these 10, 10 commandments. Planet of the Apes, Back to the Future 3, Sound of Music, and then what is that, Mean Girls? Oh no, it's the Duff, I haven't seen that yet. The costume worn by Britney Spears in the Pepsi Twist commercial. All right, the outfit worn by Adam Sandler in Happy Gilmore. This is awesome. From Zoolander, Derelict. Kind of hard to see, but there's the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt. It's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. Yeah, they need to clean this case. Nightmare on Elm Street stuff. Something from Flash Gordon. And then meet the, meet the parents. Ben Stiller's jacket. Here's a full look at the projection screen on the wall. 
I think we weren't supposed to come up here because there's like ladders and stuff up here and they were like conducting interviews. So we're going back down. So let's have a talk. I would not eat there again. It's not that it was bad, it's just that there are so many other better options at Disney Springs. If I give you any bit of advice about Disney Springs, it is don't go to Planet Hollywood. Go to Boathouse. Go to Homecoming. Go to Deluxe Burger. Go to Morimoto's. Go to any of these other restaurants that are way better than Planet Hollywood. I know that Planet Hollywood has the name, but still. Food was not that good. It was not as flavor towny as I would expect. <laughs> so that's what that's my final thoughts on Planet Hollywood. One more thing is we're around the back side of Planet Hollywood. All of these doors right here, they told us at the bar we're going to be quick service locations where you could come in and just place a real quick order for like a to-go burger and then take it wherever in Disney Springs. There is a two-story bar out back of Planet Hollywood called Stargazer's Bar. Uh, it might be pretty good to come here during the weekends or something like that. We're going into Stargazers to have a look. This place is huge. Wow. Yeah, no lack of heaters and no lack of chairs and tables. Here's the bar outside. Oh, they've got like a lot of taps out here. Kind of feeling like this is the best deal at Disney. This is a four eight ounces of beer for $12. Pretty good. I also realized I didn't really explain that very good. That is a craft beer flight that is available at Stargazers Lounge for $12 and it is four eight ounce pours of beer. A lot of the mixed drinks here come with souvenir cups. This is one of them right here. There's another one back there. As we leave Stargazers, I wanted to give you guys a quick shot at Edison Bar, because that is moving quite along and it's actually a lot further than the last time that we saw it. Plus, I wanted to show you this little entrance underneath the bridge down here. This building over here is going to be Edison Bar. This little entrance down here it's very peculiar. Yeah, there's like an awning thing that we're building there too. Why? Why right? Yeah. Like maybe that will be the entrance to Walt's place through the Neverland Tunnel. Fairly certain that's what it's gonna be after seeing this like layout now. But you never know, it could just be the entrance to Edison's. Still one of my favorite things about Disney Springs is you look at this, oh, look, there's a little turtle down there. And then we turn to the right and we notice over here by Stargazers, look at how clean the water is on this side of the bridge. What the heck is going on, Disney Springs? Feeling a lot better about this whole Walt's Place Neverland Tunnel down here, being is that we can kind of see like this little like curved area right here. That looks like it would be the front entrance to the Edison Bar. And then that circular area down there would be the front entrance to Walt's Place and the Neverland Tunnels. Hey guys, me again. I don't know that I really explained that very well. There is a rumor floating around the community that there will be a speakeasy type restaurant bar underneath the Edison that will be called Walt's Place. And the way that you get into Walt's Place is through a tunnel underneath the bridge called the Neverland Tunnel. I'm really excited and I hope that that rumor comes true. Edison looks like it's going to be gigantic. Like you can see the tower over here and then it pans all the way over here all the way out to there. That is a gigantic place. As a side note, this little piece of concept art right here kind of shows the front entrance to Edison being down here or like somewhere in this area. It's not showing anything as far as an entrance down here at the other end of the bridge. So feeling really good about this Walt's Place Neverland Tunnel rumor. Looking at some of the detail of the Edison bar, 1901, is that Walt's birthday? Or like birth year? And then the power and light down here over the doorway. I can't wait for this, it's gonna be awesome. Walking past Paradiso 37 through downtown Disney, heading towards the hangar bar and boathouse, ultimately heading towards Paddlefish, because Paddlefish is opening this Saturday, February 4th. I'm excited for that. Passing by Morimoto's and Raglan Road and noticing that right here, Wine Bar George is beginning to kind of like, you can see a big opening space for it. They haven't gone vertical yet that I can see, but I would imagine it wouldn't be too long before we start to see some construction going on here for Wine Bar George. Because Wine Bar George says it's opening in 2017, they're like, we need all the space that we can get. So we've definitely like, kind of like been encased in construction walls and just regular old walls. That was a very tight space back there. I feel like that's gonna be hard to navigate in the middle of summer or like during the busy time. Let's see, here he goes. In the Amphicar, gotta lock it down. Oh no, he's having trouble starting it. There it goes. Oh man, oh geez. All right, doing good. This is a vintage car, so it makes sense. Like, it's okay. Gotta keep them running. I like how it has a Minnesota tag, like a fake Minnesota tag. Right before it hits the water, you'll see those propellers start moving. 
There it goes. I like this. There is a honey shop here called the Savannah Bee Company. And inside, there are all kinds of bees hanging out. Like, that's some theming right there, is hanging out with the bees. That's so cool. They love it. They tried to become best friends with the bees and they weren't having it. All right, there it is. Paddlefish opening on Saturday. Today is Wednesday. They've got quite a bit of work left. Oh, well, actually it looks like it's done to me, but they're still working out there. Maybe they're doing painting? I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, it smells like paint. It does smell like paint. Here's a quick look at the paddlefish. I like that you can see up in the command area. What do you call that on like a paddle wheeler? What is this area where the captain sits? You can see the wheel up there. I'm gonna get a zoom in on it after we finish panning around and showing you guys the full view of paddlefish. There it is, there's the control wheel or the steering wheel of the paddle wheeler that is the paddlefish. Wanna see if we could see inside. Looks like they're doing some work with the waiters in there, maybe doing like a mock service. I also noticed something that on the outside of the building it says maximum occupancy 73. That's not very many people. I wonder if that's just for the bottom floor. Some of the detail inside as far as the lamps go over top of some of the tables that will be on the second floor. We just saw a family try to walk into Paddlefish like they own the place. Like guy had his like sweater over his back. Like he was like out playing tennis all day. and Like was like, I need to eat at Paddlefish. And just walked in and like somebody stopped them like, excuse me, sir, where are you going? And he's like, what do you mean? Where am I going? I'm going to eat at Paddlefish, of course. It was fantastic, they kicked him out. But it was like still, like I applaud his effort. Here's the scene out in front of Paddlefish. There's all of these hedges in front, stopping people from trying to go in, but still, people are trying to get in. One thing that I forgot to mention earlier was that we do have a closing day for Disney Quest and that is July 3rd. It will be replaced with an NBA experience. Wah, 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 wah. We'll have to go back there one day soon. So I believe that is it for us for updates from downtown Disney. So we are off and we will see you guys tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.